the simplicity of the gospel. Welcome to the Simplicity of the Gospel brought to you by the Pegwell Community Church of Christ Church in Barbados. Today is the 6th of January and I'm here to encourage you again. We started a series a few days ago and we are saying that there's some important things that you must do at the beginning of this year if you're going to fulfill that vision that God gave you. We started off looking at the fact that um, after we were illuminated, God had planted a vision in our hearts. Uh, even if we are not born again, we have a vision in our hearts as to what we want to be, where we want to go, what we want to be in life. But somewhere along the line, we have not fulfilled that. We have missed it someplace. And so God called upon us uh, when we first started to remember. He says, remember, call to remembrance after you were illuminated. And he's saying to us today, remember, remember when you got saved. Remember that which the Holy Ghost planted in your heart. You wanted to be an evangelist. You wanted to be the best praise and worship leader. You wanted to be an excellent preacher. You wanted to be a man of God. You wanted to be a woman of God. And apart from spiritual things, you, 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 you wanted to have a house before a, cer a certain time. You want to get married by a certain age. You want to have so many, so many children. You want to have a business. You want to be an entrepreneur. The Lord is calling upon you to remember. Otherwise, you could become frustrated. You could see everybody getting ahead of you. And you could become very frustrated because it seems as though you're not attaining that which you should attain. And so God is calling upon you to remember. And then he said, after you remember, I want to go back and I want to review. Examine, why haven't I attained? Why haven't I reached that goal that I wanted to reach? W what has happened? Did somebody hinder me? Did I hinder myself? Was I kind of recalcitrant? Uh, was I the type of person that, you know, think, thought that I knew it all by myself? And I did not want anybody to help me. God wants us to review. He wants us to look like a like like a businessman, looking at his balance sheet and uh, and and seeing what he where he went wrong and what else he could have done. God wants you to do that. And then having done that, he wants you to repent. Maybe you should say sorry. Uh, maybe there are a few people that you need to say sorry to. Maybe you have tried to go it all by yourself. And, you know, it didn't work out well at all. So you have not been following some instructions that your wife has been giving you or your husband has been giving you. Or maybe that the pastor has been giving you and you have. But re repentance, I don't only want to talk about sin. I want to talk about changing your mind, changing your attitude, changing your direction. Because this is going to be a very integral part of your picking up from where you are and brushing off your knees. And you got to keep running. You got to keep running. You just can't give up. God illuminated you with that particular thing in your heart. You've got to fulfill the calling of God on your life. You just cannot afford to give up. So what the Lord has wanted us to do today is to revise. Revise the plan. Maybe you have to revise the plan. And I, I, I look at Philippians chapter 3 and I want to read a portion of scripture to you to, to show you a man that had not yet attained. He did not accomplish all that he said about to accomplish. No, no, no. By any means he did not. He said that. He said not that I have already attained. No, I haven't accomplished it. But he said that there were some things that he was going to do. So you're going to have to revise. I like, I like him when he gave all his credentials and he said, uh, uh, though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinking he had very often might trust in the flesh, I more. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day. I was of the stock of Israel. I was of the, I was of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I touched the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is of the law, blameless. He gave his credentials. Very impressive. He wrote this to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 3. But I like how he went on to say, but what things were gained to me, those I come to loss for Christ. Maybe you have not achieved what you want to achieve because rather than counting yours as dumb, rather than counting yours as a loss, perhaps you frame, the, you, you frame yours and you have them up in your office in front of you that you look at all the time, you see your achievements. Not that there's anything wrong with framing it. But did that hinder you somewhere along the line? Did that, that, did that make you sit on your laurels and think that you have, you have arrived? I want to revise your plan. Maybe you should... Look, look afresh at the plans that you'll be doing. God wants us to revise the plan because you must, this plan must come to fruition. It must work. So you've got to revise it. He said, yeah, doubtless I come all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. That's what he wanted to end. That was his vision. That was his goal. 
for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb. There are some things that you should count as dumb in order to go forward with the Lord. There are some things that you should just count as, 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 as garbage, as refuge. He said, I want to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. But he, this man had so many goals. He, he, had so, he had a wonderful vision. He wanted to achieve so much in the spirit and so much for the Lord. He wanted to be found in him, that it might be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness, which is through faith of Jesus Christ. And then he said that I might know him. He's got to attain to these goals. He said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. I see four or five or six, perhaps seven different things in there that he wanted. But then he went on that he wanted to achieve. But then he went on to say, not as though I had already attained. No, I have not yet attained them. So there's some things that I have to do. I've got to make a revision. I'm not already perfect. So he said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I haven't arrived yet. I haven't seen that goal come to fruition. So that's what I'm going to do. He said, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. If you are going to accomplish, brethren, there are some things you're going to have to forget. You're going to have to revise your thinking. You're going to have to revise your plan. Something will always come against you that will get you upset. People will say things, there'll be failures, there'll be discouraging moments, all sorts of things. And sometimes there's even success that you got to put behind you. So he's revising his plan, so to speak, and he said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before, those things which are ahead. You are going to have to forget your failures, what people said, what people did. You've got to forget all the mistakes you made or, or, or the good things that you did but didn't come to pass. You've got to forget those things. And he said, those are no behind you. Those are in the rear view mirror. You cannot keep looking back at those things. They are in the past. Forget those things. Forget those things. You've been hurt in church. You've been hurt in the job. You've been hurt everywhere. Forget those things that are behind and strain every nerve like a runner to make sure that you make it to the finishing line. That is important. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to remember. He wants you to review. He wants you to repent. And now he wants you to revive because you must do that which God has called you to do. He said, I press towards the mark for the praise of the high call of God. You've got to do that. Don't let anybody put your feet in concrete. Don't become lethargic. Don't become lackadaisical. Don't throw up your hands in the spirit and say, kiss or ass or whatever will be, will be. No, that is not the answer. That is not an option. You've got to forget the things that are behind and keep running, running for those things that are ahead. You've got to revise. You know, David had to revise at one time. He wanted the presence of God back in Israel. The Ark of the Covenant. It's a symbol of the presence of God. And he decided that he was going to put a new cart. And he was going to put the Ark of the Covenant on the new cart. Sometimes we think that the new carts are the answers. We think that every new thing that comes down the pipe is the answer. And that derails you from the vision that God has given to you. So you've got to learn when to say yes to some things and no to something, no matter how new it is. That new cart cost a man his life. The Ark of the Covenant did not come back to Israel for a number of years. It ended up in another man's house and the man was tremendously blessed. Until David came to his senses and decided that the Ark of the Covenant must be carried on the shoulders of the Levites. And when he did that, when he revised his plan, when he did that, everything worked out well for him. I challenge you today. Sit down and see where you got to revise. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be too proud to do it. Don't be too arrogant to do it. Sit down and revise. And may the Lord bless you and help you as you do it. God bless you. If you do not have a local assembly, feel free to join us for an exhilarating time of worship. Our services are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Sunday evening, healing and deliverance at 6.30 p.m. Join us in prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and for Bible study on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Bless fellowship and enjoy the simplicity of the gospel.